this is the most serious thing that I've ever said to the public in my entire life. I'm Ric Flair, and I play the game by my rules. If you are the best at what you do, Greetings, and welcome to Behind the Scenes. So before we get into this Behind the Scenes episode, I have to speak my mind. I have to state my opinions. In this case, it's more so of a fact opinion, but I'll let you decide whether or not my fact opinion is actually fact or an opinion. Let me start off by saying, fuck you, Will Smith. Good evening, good evening. And I mean that from here. I mean that from the good. From the good. Uh, the reason I say that is because I'm a champion for, let me start at the top. I'm a champion for decent human beings. I don't give a damn about your race, creed, color, age, even your sexual preference. I'm a champion first and foremost for decent human beings. Right below that, I am a champion for upstanding, quality, decent men. Right, I mean, I'm talking about right, right there at that. Might be tied with that. Is that I'm a champion for decent, quality black men. And then everything else is a very, very close second, third, whatever. Right? What I'm never going to be a champion of is piss poor performance. I'm never going to be a champion of consistent shenanigans. I'm never going to be a champion of bullshit people. I'm never going to champion racism. I mean, I, all, of, all of the stuff across the board that a middle-aged black man would not champion, I also don't champion. I don't champion, I don't champion the fuck shit from anybody. I don't champion disrespect. I don't champion the bullshit. I'm not for it. Never have been, never will be. What Will Smith did to Chris Rock by slapping him on stage for telling a joke was the biggest load of bullshit I've ever seen. In my 49 years. Biggest load of bullshit I've ever seen. And the ripple effect. The domino effect of that. Is going to go far and beyond. Will Smith and Chris Rock. It just is. Like for example. Who's going to be the dumb motherfucker. To try to, try to go on stage. At a Corey Holcomb show. Or a TK Kirkland show and try to slap one of them because they feel disrespected. Bro, you're not gonna make it up out that field. Because everybody ain't got the does everybody doesn't have the patience or the restraint or the discipline is Chris Rock. Including yours truly. Will Smith would have got the brakes, the brake shoes, the brake pads. The break dust beating off of him. If that would have been me. And that's probably why God had, had you know never made me a celebrity. Because I wouldn't last long. I wouldn't have lasted long. You are not. I am not gonna be in a custom made Ralph Lauren purple label tuxedo. On stage, about to present an award at any award show, 
and I make a joke to lighten the light in the room, and whether or not the joke was in poor taste, I don't give a fuck. You walk up on stage and slap me if you want to, and I would have did if I if I was in that Chris Rock shoes, I'd have did the exact same thing. I'm not running, I'm not backing up, nothing. Slap me. I, I want you to slap me and think you're gonna turn around and casually walk on stage. Now, mind you, because I don't, there's no I don't feel. Because that wasn't staged, there's some shock involved. You saw it. Chris Rock was shocked. I probably would have been shocked too. But after about two or three steps that you took after you turned your back on me and walked off, about, those two, about that third step, oh, that's when I'd have been charging. Would have jumped in the air like Owen Hart got rested there and bulldogged the shit out of you. And then I would whip your ass. Don't get me wrong. I've, I've had quite a few fights in my 49 years. I lost one or two. I'm not the baddest. My hands on. I'm not the baddest man on the planet. If I was, I would be a retired multi-billionaire boxer. I'm just saying there's certain things that's not going to happen to me. And one of them is getting slapped on stage and me not beating your ass to the white meat afterwards. It's, it's just not going to happen. But ripple effect wise, this will affect comedians moving forward. Uh, this will affect Will Smith's uh, asking price, his career. Uh, I understand it was way deeper than an alopecia joke about Jada. Um, but what Will, what Will Smith needs to understand is that we as the black man delegation, we feel like black women have wanted protection from black men. That's what they, you know, that's, 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 that's a thing. And it's an apps. They they are one thousand percent valid to feel that way. I have two black women as adults that are children of mine. I agree one thousand percent. I was talking to my daughter's uh, boyfriend the other day, and uh, just letting him know, like, hey, that's your job. That's your job. Twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. I'm here, but I'm here. Y'all are there. It's your job. However. What women across the board need to understand is that black men need to be protected as well. So when Jada talks about fucking Tupac or whatever she said, whatever it was, when she talk, when she gets him on the red table and completely emasculates the man in front of the world, all the other stuff with August Alcina or whatever the fuck this cornball dude's name is, all that shit, she wasn't protecting him. She didn't protect him not not in the least. So him protecting his wife, kudos for him protecting his wife. Get the fuck out of here. Get the entire fuck out of here. She ain't protected this man in three years. A man made a joke about your bald ass head. So what? But it's deeper than that for Will. It's definitely deeper than that for Will. The boy, the boy fed up. He tired of people talking about him like he like like he like he vaginal. I get it. But the problem is, is that you vaginal. If you wasn't vaginal, nobody would talk to you, at you, and about you like you vaginal. You know, some people want to make it about black and white and this shouldn't have been done in front of white people. I, I ain't got no problem saying that. The problem I do have is that people saying, oh, uh, he wouldn't have did that to a white comedian. Or or, or the, the, the other side is, well, a, a white comedian wouldn't have said that in front of him. Fuck out of here with all that. Who the fuck cares? The bottom line is Chris Rock is... Will Smith is a freaking icon. He's a freaking legend. Chris Rock is a freaking icon. He's a freaking legend. If you got a problem with something he said on stage, practice restraint and then tell him to meet you outside later. But walking on stage slapping that man 
is disrespectful and I believe Corey Holcomb would have shot you. I believe Corey Holcomb would have had a 40 in his back and when you have came on stage, he'd have been like, what? And you'd have slapped him and he'd have popped you. Everybody need to grow the fuck up. Women need to grow the fuck up. Men need to grow the fuck up. Like, this shit is corny. It's sad. It's disrespectful. It's a whole bunch of shit. But the ripple effect that's going to come from, first of all, and first and foremost, what y'all better recognize, is that Chris Rock bag just went up. Yesterday's price, after getting slapped at the Oscars on national TV, ain't today's price after I practiced restraint kept the show rolling, didn't beat the hell out this man, and didn't press no charges. Hmm. His price in Hollywood just went up. I applaud it. Go Chris Rock, get your bag. Make that make make that make that price go up, number one. And number two, your next stand up gonna be incredible. I can't wait. I'm all in. Now, seamless style, behind the scenes, Mr. Parker, we're about fashion and style in the world of Ralph Lauren. So let's get back to our regularly scheduled program. Now, it's spring, fellas and fella ets. It's spring. So I wanted to look at a couple, I wanted to look at and show y'all a couple of pieces of footwear. I'm just going to show you this, this stuff here and, uh, you take from it what you will, but these these are these are things that that you want to try to style a certain way because there's a thin line between being uh, fashionably expressive and stylish and looking corny or being clownish. The, the, these items are could, you can easily OD and we don't want that to happen we don't want you to overdose All right. it's just four pair of shoes I'm going to start with this paisley floor print canvas sneaker here wonderful array of colors in these sneakers right got paisley, paisley designs here here you got a, a few floral patterns here and here. The base of this shoe is a navy blue, but you have beautiful colors all throughout. Now, whether you're doing shorts or chinos or even jeans, regardless of what you decide to wear on the bottom, they need to be solid. Now, if you have something that has maybe two of these colors in it as far as uh bottoms that's cool you can probably get away with that anything more is is probably going to be too much um we're talking minimalism when we're talking about wearing anything with these shoes but especially the bottoms chinos i would do i would do my yellow pair I would do my navy pair. I have a pair of uh, chinos in this color blue, in this aqua blue here. They do make, well, they did make, I haven't been able to locate them, but they did make an, a, uh, a lime green pair of chinos. So if you have those, that can work. You could also do your typical tan in the khaki. All right. Um, but, you know, one solid color chino, that's a color that's in this shoe will work. Now, as far as tops, I'm thinking a t-shirt or for me in particular and specifically probably some type of uh, knit polo or even a short sleeve or long sleeve button down with the sleeves rolled up. But whatever I do, again, it's gonna be solid. Now, as far as the top, doesn't necessarily have to be a color that's in this shoe. If it's a color if you have a color that could mesh with the colors that's in this shoe, it'll also work. So let's see. Um, 
there's there's a teeny a tiny bit of grape in this shoe you can't even really see it it's there and there but if you had a a purple hue long sleeve or short sleeve oxford you can pull it off with this shoe it'll work trust me i know um and then of course white uh navy any any again any one color that's in this shoe will also work um you get to where you maybe get uh close to being a little too matchy matchy if you have let's say if you did your yellow chinos with a navy polo kind of close to being too core color coordinated you want it to feel organic when, when you do something with a shoe like this so so keep that in mind when you're talking about tops and bottoms last but not least you can do socks but again you probably want to keep it solid anything because it has two it legitimately has two patterns in this shoe the floral print and the paisley the quickest way to OD is by adding another pattern somewhere. I would keep everything else solid. Now, once you go to the top, if you are doing like I'm doing today with a TAM and my height, I can get away with the, the small little bit of gingham pattern that's shown here off the floral print pants. I can get away with the stripe, stripe cap, right? But why even wear a cap? Like, when I leave later on, I'm not even wearing this cap to go out. But yeah, this this particular sneaker I've had it for quite a few year, years, but uh, you can definitely find uh, variations online like this if you like something like this. But just keep in mind, minimalism is the key when you're talking about a shoe like that. Now let's look at something a little different. Another canvas shoe. This one is a Rugby Royal with uh, a white, what well, looks like little seashells. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but the main pattern on it is the anchor. So a nautical style shoe, beautiful pair. I've only worn these once, man, but I, I really, really love these these sneakers for spring. And, and because again, I'm embracing spring, these will get some play this spring and probably summer whenever I do leave the house. But this one is a lot easier to try to pull off as far as styling. So, you know, we don't have to really do a deep dive on it. Just keep in mind that Rugby Royal is the color of the shoe. And that's not, that's not a super popular color for footwear. So just keep that in mind with everything else that you would style here. And also just for me, because I'm, I'm me, who I, I am me, flaws and all. Um, any top I wear is probably going to be nautical inspired. So or something else will probably be nautical inspired, I'd say, because I'd actually, I'd actually play this off of a, a dresser type of outfit. Like I might do a chambray shirt, but then I may throw on a bow tie that maybe has an anchor on it, or maybe a tie. And if I'm doing some type of sports coat that coordinates well, my tie might be nautical inspired or something of that nature. But even just on some simple, some simple attire, I probably would, you know, even if it's just a t-shirt, maybe it's a t-shirt with an anchor on it or a t-shirt that's nautical inspired. That's just me. You don't have to do that. Now this one, I'm not going to lie to you. I've only worn these once. You can near about tell just by looking at the bottom of them and definitely the sole. I've only worn these once because when I first got them, which was about, whoo, man, it's been about six, probably about six, seven years since I had these. They were just difficult to style for me back then but now you know with experience comes wisdom and i don't have a problem styling these now the base the basic principles for this is simple um if you're gonna if you're gonna do anything other than a short sleeve knit polo if you're gonna do a long sleeve button up i'm i'm probably going to go with a gingham pattern either in the red or either in the uh, light blue sky blue one of the two um, when I did wear these, I kept it simple. Minimalism, again, on display. I did red slim fit chinos, a navy button-up shirt, and I had a light blue cable knit sweater on my shoulders. 
nice and simple. The shoe was the star of the ensemble, yet everything else was uh, coordinated perfectly. So that's an easy way to do it too. Um, you can actually, you can actually sport this shoe without having any other colors on this in this shoe. You just need to keep it with earth, earth tones or neutral colors. So your your your, your denim, indigo, uh, tan tan and khakis, whites, blues like navy blues. All of that works with this shoe here. Last but not least, I want to show you these. I think out of the four, this is my favorite. And it's surprising to me that out of the four I've showed you today that these are my favorite because the base of this shoe is black. But I have never worn these shoes and considered the base of the shoe. Uh, I, I go strictly off the color of the floral print on here. The seafoam, the seafoam green, the yellow, even this, uh, this color has a particular name, but we're gonna call it lilac for now. But this color has a particular name that's just escaping me. But that, even that little bit of pink you can play off of. Uh, I usually pay, play off of the seafoam green because of the pony here, which I hate they put that pony right there, but it's, it's cool. But these particular shoes, I've actually worn a couple of times with this, this setup the uh, mint julep sweater and gingham shirt. And I've done it before with yellow chinos. I've done it before with traditional khaki chinos. And I've done it before with jean shorts. And it played well. So with this one right here, you have, you have a few more options as far as mixing in other patterns with your attire than you did with the first pair of floral paisleys. But you still want to probably keep it as minimalist as possible when it comes to this particular shoe. So I'll show y'all this real quick. This is another floral piece that I really love. Um, this is obviously as a shirt and not shoes, but you still kind of you still kind of have to keep the same same thoughts in mind. The shirt stands out; it's spectacular. So you know, stick with some stick with minimal minimal patterns or or minimal colors with uh your bottoms and your shoes my favorite way to play this shirt is with a suit a chino shoe a, ch mm, a chino shoe a chino suit a khaki uh a khaki cotton suit lightweight cotton suit something like that you could even play this off of, with a seersucker suit and just a, a nice brown pair of loafers let the shirt let the shirt shine and let everything else just you know complement complement your uh your shirt but that's another behind the scenes in the books hit that like hit that subscribe tell a friend get in the comment section tell me what you think about the uh shoes and the pattern shoes is that something you you've uh you've always been a fan of or is it something you're not a fan of or if it's something you never thought about or didn't even know that ralph lauren had in its arsenal and if so, you know, are you are you now leaning towards maybe copping a few pair and, and just playing around with playing around with fashion and style? And then just, you know, just keep in mind that, you know, uh, at the end of the day, the opinion stated by me, Mr. Parker, are the, are the fact opinion stated by me, Mr. Parker, and don't necessarily have to be your opinions. But you're more than welcome to get in the comment section and agree or disagree when it comes to my opinions on Will Smith and Chris Rock's situation. Um, again, this is always a safe, a safe place for men and it's a safe place for women as well. So feel free to speak your mind, all right? Artists paint pictures, haters paint narratives, goats drink coffee. Y'all have a good one.